G'day guys, what's cracking today? We're here. Sheraton Mirage Main Beach. And you're like, so what? Well, it's this massive like five star hotel complex thing. Uh, but that's not why we're here. We're here because it's the only place on the tropical Gold Coast that has palm trees. Yeah. Um, we have these, like, how many are there? Six. Six palm trees that, let me just show you, occupy the space between the path and the beach. And there is this particular um, sort of pathway that connects the path to the beach. And the sun should be coming up right through the gateway. And there are the palm trees. And so what I'm going to talk about today is the different approaches that I'm going to take in shooting this. Um, because you have a bunch of other undergrowth and a very inconsiderate fence. So to get different angles on the palm trees, it just, it's not great. It's not impossible, but it's not great. So uh, we're going to wait till the sun comes up. It's 5 a.m. Uh, the sun's due up in probably an hour and a half. But what will happen is there'll be this epic glow that starts to build. So for this particular composition, because I'm so close to the things, I can actually get away with a 24 mil. So this is the composition I've got at the moment. I'm about seven meters away from the palm tree, which is just there uh, to the camera. But even though, despite the height of the palm tree, I can get away with a 24 mil. So I'm using a 24 to 70. It's a 2.8, but I'm not going to shoot at 2.8. Um, and it enables the, the whole framing. So watch this, as I just zoom in, you'll see, um, you'll see what it feels like and looks like as we get closer. So that's 70 mil, um, which is an interesting shot if I were to lower it a little bit. But um, 24 at the moment, and I have my leveling on, auto leveling on. It's not always exactly perfect, but it's a really good place to start. And you'll notice on the Z9, um, I can shoot at 300 seconds, and I can actually increase this 480, 600, 720, 900, and then go to bulb. And so the last one I did, which was at 300 with nine f-stop of nine and 64 ISO. Um, look, the sky looks cool, but um, but this is all blown out. It doesn't really work. But the challenge is when you go over 30. So watch this. When I go see 30, you can see the light meter on the right hand side and you go 60 and the light meter is gone. And so you have to guess. So I guessed and then the light changed. But if I go, um, oh and 300 seconds is like, it's ages. How many, how many, how many minutes is 300 seconds? Five minutes. That's why it took so long. And then there's these boats that go past and I'm like, we've been waiting forever. And I'm like, as soon as the boat goes halfway, it's going to stop. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, not because I counted, just because I know my my luck that's how it rolls so you can see my light meter is just here it's nearly two stops underexposed and so i can go 30 uh, i'm going to go 60 i'm even going to push it to 120 no i'm going to go 60 i'm even going to push it to 90 and f stop of nine and we're going to go shoot again and i'm doing this not because it's the shot to take but actually because i'm just waiting for the shot to take because you've got to recognize when you shoot on long exposure you see these palm trees all of these little um leaves are going to move so the trunk's going to stay still and be in focus but this is going to be a bit of a blurry mess at the top so it's not ideal and you see these stars and whatnot so this star actually here isn't a star at all it's jupiter and jupiter moves around um, it sort of like has a, an arc that it goes on and so instead of it being a nice little dot it becomes a, uh, a line which is just a bit annoying um, yeah, so, so some of the challenges to, to behold, but I wouldn't recommend a long exposure for this. It's just good to do while we wait for the glow, and you can see the glow, that glow to really pop and bang. And then we'll reduce the, um, the air long exposure. We'll uh, bring down the aperture, making sure that front palm tree is in uh, focus, and uh, might increase the ISO just to capture everything without having to have a long exposure. And well, here is what I got. That photo's not too bad, right? And amazing what you can do when you just push up your ISO, drop your shutter speed, and lower your aperture. And of course, in this scenario, I don't need everything in focus, I just want this in focus. But if you put a two second timer on before you take the shot, it takes away all the vibration that happens when you push the button on the camera. 
So when it's an extended long exposure, say five minutes, uh, it doesn't matter too much if you're clicking this because it'll all just even itself out. But if you want a really crisp, sharp image, two second timer, click it, every, all the shake goes out of the camera and then it takes a shot. And if you want to get super pedantic, you can put it on silent shooting if your camera can do that and so you won't even have the click. Especially if you're shooting on a DSLR, you have the mechanical shutter, it goes click and can create just a smidge of shake. So if you really wanted to fine tune the sharpness of an image, uh, it's always a really good handy tip to have in mind. We're encountering this really epic dark orange glow, which is looking sick. And I just want to remind you that you can shoot from a far away on a 24mm, but um, I actually came in here and shot much closer to the palm trees. And you see the difference the composition makes. It just, a little bit of fat chin, put like this. <laughs> Uh, you see the difference the composition makes, it just takes on a different thing. So this image really allows the palm tree to draw you into the shot. And I took this first image and then I, I wasn't quite happy with the way the background palm trees were framed and so I moved a little bit to my left and took this shot and was much much more happier with it um, and with the I put it in manual focus so the autofocus wasn't jumping around everywhere had focus peaking on um, which showed me exactly what was in focus and what was out of focus um, and the other thing you need to be careful of see behind us is these great spotlights and the spotlights uh, cast a shadow and so if you look at my shadow for example morning German hey how are you gonna get a crack of a photo this morning oh, it's the gonna be good and so the, the shadow can be in the shot and that's just rubbish and I'll just take that out in Photoshop. So I found it's always super handy to have a array of lenses at your disposal and for those of you wondering uh, most of my sh uh, like these sort of vlogs are accompanied by time lapse and I use a GoPro Hero 10 and I've just stuck it there with a the Ulanzi kind of octopus tripod which means I can attach it to anywhere I can put it anywhere and I just put it there for the shoot and then forget about it and a couple of hours later after I get home I have to come back and pick up my camera hopefully it hasn't been stolen so it's usually the way uh, things work so the Sun's not quite up yet but it's looking really nice and so I'm gonna put the drone up because the shot I actually really want today is kind of a, uh, a pano of just the treetops of the actual palms so we're going to go and see if I can do that with some nice pastel colors in the sky which should really complement that um, and I've just been playing around with the wide lens so you, you kind of sit down under a palm tree and shoot up it looks really really cool and use those leading lines for something a little bit different so this is on like 14 mil mega wide uh, but not with a fisheye effect um, and you tell me down below what you think as I get the bird up in the air Now if you don't cut your head off when you do that little maneuver or slice your wrists up. spent the remainder of the morning just enjoying the sunrise as it pops up in between the palm trees and put the bird up and circled around a couple of times and so I'm going to leave you with some of that footage just hope you enjoy them and you can see what the different options are you have when you come to something that you might be really familiar with I've shot this a ton of times but this morning I've been really really happy I think the image I'm most happy with is this one where I put it on super wide, sat down under the tree, but that one poking over the top. So you've still got a landscape, but that one coming over the top kind of pushes you into looking at the photo. And um, I'm just, I'm thrilled with it. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope this has been helpful. Love to hear from you in the comments if you want to say g'day or whatever you want to do. If you've got any questions, happy to uh, wrestle with them down there. And otherwise, um, subscribe, like. It's a bit, a bit boring saying that, doesn't it? But we're approaching 8,000 
subscribers so you, you guys are the 8,000 and I am thrilled just knocked over a million views the other day just humbled and stunned that we ever got there it kind of surprised me this notification came up I was like oh, oh wow gosh we've come a long way thanks for being part of the journey and I'll see you in the next video bye peeking on no it's not right photo peeking focus peeking had focus peeking on.